Hello Pro Guides family and welcome back to another video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we're going to be talking about the Swedish powerhouse known as Breach. But before we get into that, you know what time it is. It's time for a question of the day. Today we want to ask you, do you think Breach needs a nerf? If you watch our tier list videos, then you know that Breach routinely tops off for a good reason. Personally, I think he's one of the best agents in the game as it seems like he is the answer to just about everything. Let us know what you guys think in the comments down below and now let's go ahead and dive into this absolute unit of an agent and see what makes him tick. Love him or hate him, Breach has got abilities. Actually, about 4 of them if you could believe that. First up on that list of abilities is Aftershock. Costing only 100 credits for a maximum of 1 charge, Aftershock is an equipable ability that can be fired through walls. You'll see that going through walls is a common theme for Breach's abilities, but what is extra cool about Aftershock is that when it is fired, it creates a very delayed explosion on the other side of the wall. This explosion will kill or severely damage any enemies caught within its blast, making it the best ability in the game for clearing angles and corners. Be careful about where you point this thing, however, as it can damage both you and your allies as well as enemies. Up next is another one of Breach's annoying abilities, Flashpoint. Putting you back at only 200 credits per charge up for 2 charges is pretty sweet, but I'm pretty sure it will blind you for longer than you thought something that costs half as much as Sage's wall. Flashpoint is another ability that needs to be fired through a wall, and when fired it creates a flashbang on the other side of the wall that blinds anyone who looks at it. Not only does it blind you, but you might as well just go and make a sandwich or something because you're going to be blinded for a while. But seriously, Breach's Flash is the longest blinding one in the game, so be smart about when and where you use it. If Flashpoint left you dazed then you ain't even ready for Breach's signature ability. Fault Line is the last of Breach's normal abilities and with only one cooldown. Every 35 seconds, Breach can set off a quake in a straight line that will daze all players caught within it. This ability is probably the least annoying out of all of Breach's abilities as it can easily be dodged or simply wait for the daze effect to go away, but unlike Breach's ultimate, the daze only lasts about 2 seconds before dissipating. While it is annoying to deal with, at least you can still move and shoot, albeit not perfectly, while dazed. And speaking of Breach's ultimate, here it is, Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder costs 7 ultimate points and creates a giant shockwave in a conical shape that, well you guessed it, can go through all surfaces and walls. If hit by one of the shockwaves, it will knock all players up in the air and give them a daze effect lasting around 5 seconds. Rolling Thunder is without a doubt one of the best engagement tools in the game and you can easily win a round if used properly. Rolling Thunder can daze teammates and enemies alike though, so positioning properly before letting it rip is a must. Alright, we know that this is the part that you guys have been waiting for, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Breach. After taking a look at his abilities, we can definitely see that Breach is an initiator who specializes in messing people up. Of course, one glance at his profile in the game would have told you that, but people seem to think that Breach is a sentinel in all of my games. While Breach has access to a lot of utility, his job is not to just sit back and play a sentry, Breach needs to be the one that's getting up close and personal. Bringing a Breach because he has flashes isn't a valid reason, and a Breach player needs to properly understand how to deploy their utility. As mentioned earlier, Aftershock is a very useful corner clearing tool, but you can only get one charge per round so you need to make sure that you use it right. You will definitely have some luck by just shooting it into common hiding locations like Cubby B site on Bind or Mail on Split. But if you truly want to main breach, then keeping track of enemy positions and ability usage is very important. Let's say that you and your team are hiding inside Hookah on Bind and you guys are trying to push onto site. Being breached, you can put a flash onto the site and then use your Aftershock on Cubby but die to their Cypher holding on Elbow. Now that was definitely not the worst play in the world, and you could probably get a few rounds just by repeating the same ability usage in the same spots, but if we take into consideration that we know most Cyphers play on B's site and that most of them don't really sit in Cubby because it's too risky and they're left exposed while on their camera, well then we are going to be left with a few other options. We know that we most likely don't need to change where our flash is since it will blind most of the site anyways, but we do need to figure out more an effective way to use Aftershock. If you are a few rounds into the match, you might have to be able to figure out where the Cypher likes to hide. But the most common hiding locations for him on b side are either behind the metal container or elbow. Once you figure that out, we can start using our utility more effectively. Flash goes out on Hookah Wall, Aftershock goes towards the elbow, scaring out the Cypher for a second and allowing you to get onto site without dying. We have just completely changed the outcome of the round by using our head for a few seconds and knowing how many people react to being flashed and pushed out of the corner. This is the true trick to mastering Breach, reading people. If you can look at a situation and have a good idea of how a specific agent can react to your abilities, that is the second step. The final step is being able to look at a situation and approximate how the enemies will react with one ability and then using a notation to set up for an actual kill. What that meant was that if you flash in a corner and then immediately aftershock it, players most likely in that corner will actually stay in that corner while the blind fades and does not have enough time to escape the aftershock. 
Big brain plays like this can only be made after a lot of practice and dedication. And if you want to make sure that you're getting the best practice possible, then make sure to check out ProGuides.com where we offer Valorant coaching. Join today and get on-demand access to some of the best players in the game who are just waiting to help you get better. If you prefer a more community environment, then we got your back with the Pro Guides Valorant Discord. Check out the both links in the description down below. So now you know that enemies will try to act that way when they're flash and then when met with an aftershock. That information is all well and good, but let's go ahead and talk about how you actually get your team onto the site. Now, Breach is an initiator class of an agent, but that doesn't mean he's the first person onto the site. No, that job is left squarely to an entry fragger, however Breach is normally the second or third person in. Going in first versus second actually matters a lot more than you think, as the first person who enters is probably the first person that dies, even if they get the initial kill. Unfortunately, that's just the way Valorant works with trading kills, but if the Breach player is the first to die, the team loses a very important utility that can be useful later on into the round or in a post plan situation. Instead, going in second and third gives you a good chance to trade kill for a teammate and also gives you some bonus information to better use your utility. The first player in this is normally always scanning for the enemy player to shoot, and once they find one, they will focus that one player until they are dead. As the second player in, you get to have a better idea of how the defenders are actually setting up the site, and probably even know the location of the other defenders on site, since I bet that they're also shooting or using abilities. All this information is given to you practically for free just because you went second or third. Now some of you guys will call this baiting, and I want to make clear the difference between baiting and entry fragging. Baiting is just someone who follows you around and waits for you to die to either get a kill for themselves or just to pick up your weapon. Entry fragging, on the other hand, is a vital role to the team where the agent or player with the best aim or abilities, usually duelist and valorant, will have to take the first contact with the enemies because now they have the best chance of winning 1v1 in a straight gunfight. Now with most entry fraggers, they die pretty quick because they either got traded by the enemy or they lost a gunfight with the player on the site, but using the information your entry fragger gathered by dying is not baiting. It is baiting if you intentionally don't peek to keep yourself safe until your entry fragger is dead on site, however. So yes, going in second or third as breach is actually very beneficial and I wish I saw more people taking advantage of the information that entry fraggers are able to bring to the table, but just be careful not to flash your entry fragger. Now that you're onto the site, what do you have to do? Well, if you have the spike, then well, you should probably plan it. But assuming that you don't have the spike, try setting up in a hard to check corner. The corner will probably help give you the cover unless the enemy team has a breach as well, and also give you an easy way to deploy your abilities. Since breaches flash last for quite a while, listening to a group of enemies getting ready to try and retake the site and then popping the flash in their face is pretty effective to get a multi-kill. Now the sides have swapped and you're on defense, so what should you do? Breach is amazing at getting him and his teammates onto his site, but how good is it at defending one? Well, he's actually pretty dang good at it. Having access to what is essentially three solid abilities is massive, and his ult can quickly and easily stop a rush in its track. Yes, his ultimate, the ability that sends everyone flying everywhere. I think it's actually more useful on defense than it is on offense, because when you're attacking, if you daze somebody behind the wall, they'll just stay behind that wall until the effect wears off. Sure, you can try and peek them and you'll still have the advantage in that gunfight, but it's just not the same as getting a perfectly timed ulti off on the attackers and making them just go bye-bye. On defense, you should either be playing on the mid section of the map or the bomb site with the least entrances. Breach does well at mid on most of the maps because he can quickly flash and aftershock the attacking players on the mid and then let the defenders take early mid control. Sites like B on Split, C on Haven, B on Bind, and B on Ascent also benefit from having a Breach. All of these sites have no more than two entrances, but ones that have a heavy choke point and are very easy for Breach to flash, daze, or even kill enemies that just get a little bit too close. One of the hardest parts of Breach on defense is just how much you need to not use your abilities. The problem with defense as Breach is that once you stop a push for 10 or 15 seconds, suddenly all your abilities are gone and the attackers can just walk up and step all over you. Instead, you should be using your abilities sparingly and only when you are sure that the enemies are committing to a push. Breach's abilities get more and more effective later on to the round, as blanking off an area for 5 seconds matters a lot more when there's only 20 seconds left in the round versus 60 seconds. If you decide to use your abilities, try to conform at least 1 or 2 kills off of them. If you are blinding attackers without peeking them or forcing them back without taking control of that area yourself, then you are pretty much wasting your abilities because after all is said and done, nothing has really changed. Your team didn't get any map control and the enemy team still has an unobstructed path to the bomb site. If you're going to use your abilities, make sure that you have some sort of follow up, even if it is as possible as peeking around the corner to make sure the enemies have backed off. Well guys, that about does it for our video today. Make sure to click the links on the descriptions down below for our website and our Discord, and while you're down there, consider dropping a like and subscribe. Sorry if my voice sounded a little bit weird, I actually have a freaking huge canker sore on my mouth and it hurts so much to talk, but you know, I'm doing this for you guys. Anyway, everyone stay safe out there, stay healthy, and until next time, peace out.